Ida had pierced the skull of little beings with a pin. These wounds brought a slow infiltration of blood into the brain and probably manifestations of meningitis with tetanus. This would explain the convulsions that distracted the suspicions. So we see in this article that the children, two, at least two of these children, they reported having convulsions prior to death. So this was not a fast death, right? Um, I don't think it would be incredibly prolonged. Like I said earlier, I, I, I would be interested to see or to know exactly what that time frame was or if it was relatively quick. Um, but <clears throat> that's just me being curious about it. I'm just, it's just for me to think about an infant being killed. I would not want it to be something where they suffered. I don't want anybody to suffer. But you think about a, a, an infant who can't defend themselves and who, in their mind, completely trusts whomever's taking care of them wholeheartedly. Um, it's, just, it's just really heartbreaking. It's just really heartbreaking. Um, for the children, Shiner, Ritzer, and Kermir, the accused made spontaneous confessions which were recorded by the judge, the small corpses were in such a state of decomposition that the medical examiners could not pronounce with absolute certainty on the causes of death. For little Bickler, one had thought of a death caused by lack of care. It took a counter-autopsy to discover at the base of the skull a small pustule under which was a tiny sting penetrating to the brain. Ida, who had admitted without difficulty the five other crimes, claimed that the wound was from a fall and it was only when she was brought back to prison that she told the, the guard the whole truth. So she lied throughout, you know, she denied doing it, um, and then confessed, and then still denied killing someone else. Um, she was actually put into a district, they called it a lunatic asylum, for mental examination that lasted about a month. Um, I love reading these older articles because the wording that they use is so different. Um, it just sounds funny, you know, reading an article that uses English language. We've changed so much. There's so many different, we wouldn't say like the small corpses. Um, not that you don't use corpses, you know, a corpse, but <clears throat> it's not something we would use in a journal article. We would, you know, probably say the small um, infants or the small babies. It would be a little more, um, mm, not so eerie. I think the use of the word corpse for me is just eerie. So, um, interesting. The English, the English that they use, how it's translated. Um, another article, also translated from um, from the French language, this was in Munich in October of 1907. Um, this journalist says, I have just made a detailed inquiry into the series of murders that Ida Schnell is responsible for. Ida, the 14-year-old who has killed seven babies in her care um, by sinking pins into their brain. Here are the circumstances that led to the discovery of these incredible atrocities. The Oppenheimer couple, who live in the outskirts of Dachau, in the suburbs of Munich, recently hired Little Schnell to look after their baby, Berta, for a few weeks. She had been on duty for a few days when on the 18th of September, Mrs. Oppenheimer, having heard her child cry, hurried home. I'm assuming she might have been in the yard or something, maybe the garden and said, why did you leave Berta? She said to the young maid that she met on the doorstep. I left her, replied Ida Schnell, because I think she will die. Miss Oppenheimer did not listen anymore and rushed towards her little girl, whom she took in her arms, rocked for a few moments, covering her with kisses, and to whom she gave the breast, which means she tried to breastfeed the child. The child having calmed down, Miss Oppenheimer went back to the fields, but in the evening when she came back, Little Berta was in bad shape and soon succumbed to convulsions, in spite of the care of Dr. Fischel, who had been summoned in haste. Understanding absolutely nothing about this almost sudden death, the doctor carefully examined the little nurse but discovered on the neck 
only two brown spots insufficient to accuse the young maid of murder. Nevertheless, he was struck by the fact that Ida Schnell had already been a servant in two other families whose children had died in almost identical conditions. And we see this a lot, don't we? We see this this pattern that that a serial killer sets up. You know, it's their mark. It's how they do things. And it's easy for us to... I'm, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it, it it's part of what gets people... Uh, what stops serial killers, you start seeing a pattern. You start seeing what their um, MO is. And it's easy to link these deaths to one person. And so that's what you have in this case. Um, somebody, this doctor, you know, eventually put it in, put it together in his mind. Okay, this, this nursemaid has been involved in two other households where the infant died, so I'm a little suspicious about that. He then inquired about the young servant's existence before arriving in the area and learned that two other children still in her care had died almost suddenly in convulsions. These five suspicious deaths decided Mr. Fischel to summons prosecutors. Um, Ida who on the 21st of September, after witnessing Berta Oppenheimer's return home, had gone back to her father's house and was arrested. And this is the journalist speaking. As I telegraphed to you the day before yesterday, soon confessed as a result of the findings of the autopsy of the small victims. Three of them were exhumed yesterday and autopsied today. This operation was most conclusive. It allowed to establish that their death had indeed been provoked, as the young servant had confessed by pinpricks practiced at the top of the skull and which had caused paralysis of the brain. Now, the other report says it was at the base of the brain, but we know the soft spot um, in a child's head, it's the fontanel, I believe is how that's pronounced, the fontanel, um, is the soft spot. And, of course, it webs, it webs together as they grow, but you have to really protect an infant's head until it does, you know, start to um, come together. Uh, and in this particular case, these children were young enough that they still had a pretty large soft spot in the top of their head, which would have made it very easy for her to penetrate and, you know, the pin enter the brain, causing damage. Um the two other small corpses were also autopsied in the evening, but at the time when I telegraphed you, I do not know the results of these exams. It is likely, however, that they will corroborate the precedents. Finally, the last two victims of Ida Shell have been exhumed today, but the legal autopsy <clears throat> will be performed tomorrow or perhaps Monday. It is believed it is established that these seven babies were killed by the young maid, that the list of her crimes will be closed because... We now know that she served only in seven families. Nevertheless, it is still unclear whether she did not engage in the same maneuvers on children not in her care. Also very common, right? We, when, when you finally find someone who you, you, they confess or you figure out that they're the culprit, then you start pulling in all these other reports. Was this person in this area? Was this person in this area? You see that a lot with serial killers because a lot of them travel. Uh, you know, some stay in the same area, but, but some will travel like uh, Ted Bundy, who traveled, you know, to four or five different states, Florida, um, Washington, just the, he went a lot of different places. And when they finally caught him, all of these precincts came together because they didn't have the database that we have today. So they all came together and they questioned him, were you in this area at this time? Um, and they, they made a timeline. There's a very detailed timeline of Ted Bundy's life um, and where he was traveling during the times he was killing. And so they have tried to match deaths during that time that he was in that area to him. And that's how it typically happens. This is on a small scale, of course, in the same let's say, village or same town, um, we can make it the assumption that she didn't travel very far to get to work because she wouldn't have had the means to do that. 
uh, and it would be it would just make some more sense that you would have a nursemaid who maybe even lived with you. So, especially if they were supposed to care for that child twenty four seven. Um. So this is talking this this piece here is speaking specifically about Ida. According to the information I've been able to obtain from the journalist, Ida Schnell is the natural daughter of a, a sosthame laborer and has a worrisome history of pathological. We would say like pathological illness or pathological tendencies, um, but he ended this sentence with a worrisome history of pathological. She is, I'm assured, a very a girl very backward physically and morally. She scarcely seems to be 12 years old, and she is as unintelligent as possible. Her teacher, whom I interviewed, told me that when she attended school, she was apathetic and indolent. She never made any progress. Nevertheless, she all, always seemed to him a rather gentle character. So when he says that she was apathetic and indolent, that speaks to a lack of empathy, right? She didn't care about other people. She didn't have any kind of concern when something happened. Um, it's really, I think for me, this, what stood out for me in this particular case, yes, it's atrocious. She's 13, 14 year old, maybe 12 year old girl who sticks a hat pin into the head of an infant is horrible and disturbing. But when I read this about her being apathetic and indolent, it just struck a chord with me. It just reinforced my strong belief that that lack of empathy really is the key. I think it is the key something that we have to ensure we teach our children. And you can teach empathy. I mean, you can teach someone to have empathy. Um, certainly, that doesn't mean that everybody who has empathy is not going to kill somebody. There's no guarantee of that. Everybody has free will to some degree. But, you know, as over a hundred years ago, someone made the, op the observation that she was apathetic. So it was, it was something that was distinct about her, right? Let, let's talk to the teacher about who this person is. And these are the words that he chose to use, um, even though he thought that she had a rather gentle character. Hey, so did Ted Bundy. He was very charming. Women fell all over him. Um, the people that he, the police officers, the investigators, the detectives, they all liked him. As a person, they liked him. He was charming and likable, if you will. So, you know, she seems to have had a, a gentle nature about her, um, probably because they say unintelligent. I wonder if she didn't have some pretty serious learning delays. Um, and then considered apathetic. Um, without any other information to go on, I would make an assumption that she is very, very delayed, maybe even to the point of what we would, you know, certainly she would be mentally disturbed, but I think that she might be a person who was incapable of learning, um, at a certain level. And... <clears throat> You wouldn't, you wouldn't say this today. We don't use the word retarded, but I'm not even sure that word was even in existence in 1907, but that's what they probably would have deemed her as. Um, her old comrades, on the other hand, speak discreetly. I apologize. I'm losing my voice today. I don't know why, but um, it started yesterday, and so today I'm like, it's feel I feel like it's getting worse. Um, her old comrades, on the other hand, speak discreetly and say that she often laughed out loud and without any apparent motive, which would be a sign of cerebral disturbance. <laughs> um, 
psychopathy, right? On the other hand, from the inquiry I made with her former master, 